Good evening once again. I don't know about everybody in here, but I kind of feel like it uh, feels like baseball season, right? I think the wind chill today was above zero, so let's play ball. Why not? My name is Simon Gray. I'm the director of athletics here at Niagara University. Welcome to the third annual first pitch dinner. We're so delighted that you've joined us. To me, I think this is the perfect way to kick off the baseball season. I think it's probably the most anticipated season in Niagara baseball history. We're coming off our sixth most wins in program history last year. For the third time ever, two players were drafted in the Major League Baseball draft. And of course, on April 7th, we're gonna open the brand new sparkling Bobo Field. <laughs> So to me, it's fitting that we start this season with tonight's dinner, honoring someone that has accomplished so much in the sport of baseball and in life. A true treasure for the national pastime, Mr. Terry Collins, thank you for joining us. I also want to thank, a uh, special thank you to John Dandies, the president of Rich Baseball Operations, for his assistance in bringing Terry to us. Mr. Dandies, thank you so much. Also, a special welcome to Mike Buchkowski, the General Manager, Vice President of Rich Baseball Operations, for joining us tonight. As you can tell, a tremendous partnership with Rich Baseball Operations, uh, with our Sport Management Program, our Athletics Department, so we're very, very thankful for the partnership. Thank you so much. Uh, as I mentioned, there's tremendous excitement surrounding the brand new ballpark over there on Mon Eagle Ridge. From the team, to the alumni, to the campus community, uh, we're all, we all can't wait to get in there. I know the guys have been in there a little bit, but we can't wait to get in there as a community and enjoy it. In fact, as I was leaving our basketball game at Canisius earlier this week, this gentleman who I didn't know pulled me aside and said, is that baseball field going to be ready to go this year? I said, you better believe it. I'll see you out there. <laughs> I'd like to take a moment to thank, I, I, we can't do it individually, but I want to thank everybody in the room here today who has so graciously donated to that project. Uh, it's truly been a group effort. Uh, we are not done yet, but there are several people in this room here tonight who have given transformational gifts and have helped us secure $1.77 towards a $2.1 million project. How about a round of, round of applause for all those folks? <laughs> but as I said, we're not done yet. We have about $330,000 left to go. Uh, it will take an effort from people in this room, and it will take an effort from people outside of this room to cap off this project. We're currently in the legacy campaign of our fundraising efforts. The naming rights are still available. John P. Bobo Field will never go away, um, but there are naming rights available for the entire complex and for other areas around the field. We're also doing a commemorative brick campaign. Uh, hopefully most of you have heard about that. I know the guys have. They completed a full telethon trying to get people to buy the uh, to commemorative bricks. It's gone very well, but if you want to have a brick out there for opening day on April 7th, we're already past the deadline, but if you get it in on Monday, we'll see what we can do, okay? That's a great chance to have a legacy out there for the entirety of that park. A few other special welcomes tonight. We have members of our Board of Trustees with us. We have our National Alumni Association President, Mr. Frank Fianaka. We have several of our Vincentian Fathers who are here with us tonight. Thank you so much for your constant support. There's University Administrators, members of our President's Cabinet, faculty, staff, our athletics department staff outside of baseball have also joined us. And what that says to me is that there's a tremendous commitment and a tremendous camaraderie within this community. How about a round of applause for all those folks who have joined us? And then there's, of course, the heart of our baseball program. Our team, guys, can't wait to see you get started this year. Of course, our coaching staff, all of the parents, where would we be without the parents? Thank you so much for being here tonight. And a special thank you and welcome to all of our alums. If our baseball alums could please stand. Yeah. 
hopefully you all know this, but of course the success that this baseball program is, is perched to achieve here wouldn't happen without the foundation of excellence that you have laid. So thank you to all of our alums for coming back. This is a record setting evening for attendance. We're so happy to have you here. Uh, it's going to be a wonderful night. At this time it gives me great pleasure to bring to the microphone the head coach of Niagara Baseball in his 10th season, Rob McCoy. I was thinking about what to say about Rob and, and then it became pretty clear. Uh, he loves this program. And to the bottom of his soul, he is a Niagara baseball man. And you could really see it as the field was being built because I think Rob treated that field like a child of his. He checked on it about every four minutes. Remember when you had your child and you checked to see if they were sleeping or awake for about every three minutes uh, that first, first few nights? Well, Rob's was about three and a half months. He was checking on that field every day, and I think he knew every single person that helped build that field because he was checking on them and making sure they were doing the best that they could. Uh, and that was all for Niagara baseball. In addition to the on-field accomplishments that Rob has led as the head coach, including a win against number 12 Virginia last year, uh, I really value Rob's leadership because of the guys he brings to our campus and our program. Uh, they do a tremendous job in the classroom. They do a wonderful job in the community uh, I think this baseball team does more community service than any other group on campus, uh, and they're really valued for their leadership. Ladies and gentlemen, the leader of our Niagara baseball program, head coach Rob McCoy. Yeah, he's not wrong about that, uh, checking on the field thing. So. <laughs> I don't know how I got any work done, but I, I managed to. So uh, I'm incredibly humbled to see all you here. This is awesome. I mean, we started this thing three years ago, and, and it's, we've seen it grown since. And <clears throat> it's a, it's, to me, it's a real testament to uh, just the, the, kind of, uh, the kind of guys that we have here and, and the lives that they impact around campus. Um, you know, the people that they have in their lives that come with their families to attend this thing. It's, it's just an awesome thing. We've got so much support. Um, so I thank you all for, for coming and being here with us tonight. We've got, we've got parents of alums, when the alums aren't even here, that, that, are, that still come back um, and support us, which is, to me, that's the, it really is the, um, <clears throat> the biggest compliment that I could get is that alums still want to be involved and they want to come back and they had a great experience and it, in some little way, changed, changed their lives or, or made them better men. So I thank you guys all for coming. My, my role in all this is, um, is basically I'm, gonna, I'm just going to talk about the, this past year and then where we're headed. You know, uh, I think that's, this event is for these guys. Um, I know there's other guys on our team around you know, other tables, but it's to, it's to kind of show you what we've been able to do up to this point and, and then where we're going from here because I think if we keep sharing that message, no matter what, we get this thing around, we, we get the word spread out, you know, and that's how you know, this hand touches this person and this, this person touches this person. And the next thing you know, it, it, our whole program is just surrounded by so much support that um, it's, just, it's way more um, than just about us. So um, <clears throat> as some of you guys have heard me say before, we, you know, a couple years ago, we we really had to make a change in the program in terms of where we were going and what we wanted to uh, what we wanted to accomplish. And um, we had some help, uh, but at the end of the day, we got to a point where uh, we we really wanted to define what we were all about. And uh, we came up with the acronym Eagles. Uh, it stands for Excellence, Accountability, Grit, Love, Energy, and Selfless. And uh, we talk about it every day. Um, one of those core values, uh, we, we, we want our guys to take that, those core values into their lives, uh, not just on the field, but off. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, over the last th two or three years, those, you can ask the guys that are now alums, these young, these young guys over here who helped start this, uh, who bought in themselves to help, you know, bring it to all the new faces that we have now. Um, it's been trans uh, transform transformational for us because, um, it makes it way more about just baseball because when you make it just about baseball, it, it, you, there's, there's too many ups and downs and uh, it's got to be more fulfilling than that. So <clears throat> uh, having said that, I'll go over some highlights. Uh, Simon already touched on a couple of them, um, but uh, I'll, I want to I, I brag on these guys for a bit, so bear with me. Um, 
you know, off the field, uh, we really take pride in our community service. Um, we, we've got more work to do on it this year, uh, but the two major things we've done since we all got together last year uh, was we helped uh, with Too Good to Toss, which is an on-campus effort to uh, go around and, and collect all the things that people leave in the dorms, and what they do is they bring them to yard sale them off for uh, the Vincentian mission. So it's, uh, you know, it's a great effort. Um, it, you know, we, we, we got into it uh, because I, you know, I became, I've become friends over the years with um, uh, Jenny Passeri, who's here. Um, she asked me for a, for a favor and we did it one year and I was like, wow, we really made that a lot easier for them. <laughs> you know, like, uh, so we kept doing it because I couldn't imagine, you know, a handful of volunteers just going around to every dorm and every dumpster and everything they do. So it was great. Um, and we're going to we continue to do that. We would also helped out with Souls for Souls. And this is, this is an awesome thing. Um, <clears throat> for a long time, all those, all those sandals from Cave of the Winds at the falls, uh, they just got tossed away. Uh, dumpster, garbage, uh, they didn't even get recycled. Um, uh, but we, uh, we got involved with, the, the university got involved in gathering those, um, gathering them up, and then delivering them or taking them and getting them to people who actually needed footwear, needed footwear um, in, in countries that aren't as well off as ours. So, um, you know, once and sometimes twice a year we, we show up downtown and we load a semi truck full of those Cave of the Wind sandals and, and get them to people who actually need uh, that, that convenience. Um, academically, we had, nine, we had nine all MAC academic selections. Um, Joel Brophy, Cody Eckerson, Julian Gallup, Zach Kolajewski, Trevor McCauley, Matt McEwen, Jordan Peranto, Jeff Sito, and Nigel Stearns. Uh, and all those guys are in the room today, whether they are alums or they're still on the team. Quick, quick story about Trevor. Um, he, uh, his family has been in this program for nine years. His brother played here for four, and then he's been here for five, and we hope it's not six. Uh, but I, but that's, been, that's been a while. So, great family, and it's my pleasure. Uh, we had a, we had a, th a th this, this fall we had a 3.28 team GPA, which is the highest it's been since I've been here. Um, 25 guys were above a 3.0, 19 were a 3.5 or better, and one was a 4.0, and that was Evan Kaiser. So Evan, stand up. You get the special record. Um, we have a lot, we've, we've got a lot of practice time, and we expect a lot of these guys so to, to, to get grades like that um, while they're in class is awesome. Um, on the field, as Simon said, six most, vic most victories in, in a season uh, at Niagara. Best, uh, and, and then we had, the, we had, we enjoyed beating the number 12 ranked team in the country last year in Virginia, which was super special to me because I went to grad school there and um, I watched a lot of games on there and I, I watched, I've watched a lot of northern teams go down there when I was at school there and get, just get beat bad. Um, so to go down there and compete, and what a lot of people don't realize is that we, we, we were lucky enough to, to, to win one game, but we lost the other game against them five to three. Um, so in, in two games, we gave up five, five, five runs and five runs. And up to that point, they hadn't scored less than 10 against their, uh, in their 10 wins prior to that. Um, <clears throat> it's a testament to our, to our pitchers and, and how hard they work. Uh, we had five all-max selections, two first-teamers, Cody Eckerson and Tanner Kerwer. Um, two second team selections, Trevor McCauley and Greg Cullen, and we had the rookie of the year in Matt Brash. Um, two players were drafted, as Simon said, Daniel Procopio in the 10th round to the Angels, Tanner Kerwer to the 20th round to the Blue Jays, and baseball uh, had our first ever All-American at Niagara, and it was Matt Brash, he was a freshman All-American last year. Um, so let's give those a So that's a quick recap of, of um, what we were able to do on and off the field last year. Now let me tell you about where we were going, and we've met, we've met about this. This is something that was really big to us this year. Um, it, happened to, it happened to come around recently. 
But we've got our core values, we've got our roadmap, we've got, we've got the idea of where we want to go with our organization. The next thing is, what, what are we playing for? What are we doing here? Why, you know, if, what are the kids doing here? Why do you send your kids here? Uh, if you're alums, why do you support this team? That's the thing that we really wanted to, to establish. And <clears throat> I challenged the group of seniors that we have, because it's, it's, a, it's a phenomenal group. Um, they're, very, they're very smart, they're very articulate. How do we, how do we wrap our heads around this? Because I feel like, you know, every year we're, we're, we, we want to be good on the field, we want to be good off the field, but there's more to it than that. There's, it's something up here, it's, it's a purpose, it's something bigger than all of us. So how do we, how do we get to that? What, how do we define it? What are we working for? And what they came up with was phenomenal, okay? Um, so just to kind of give you, an, you guys an idea of where we're going is, we're, we want to write our own legacy, right? So our goal moving forward is to, um, is our program, Niagara Baseball, is, is a book. It's a, it's a book, it's been written over time, it's, it was written before we were here, it's gonna be written after we're gone. Um, and it's, it's, it's semi-permanent, it's always gonna be there, but we have the ability to, to affect change on that, okay? Every day we can write our new, our new story. So, <clears throat> uh, we, we decided that each year is gonna be a chapter, okay? And this year is chapter 70. This is the 70th team in Niagara baseball history. Okay, and we, want, I, I, we presented it to the guys and they, the big thing is we want them to be responsible about how they write their chapter. Okay, so every day is a new day. Every word, every line, every paragraph, everything they do is gonna be memorialized forever, right? So with all these, with the alums in the room, if, if we got you guys together and we asked you about, you know, what were your memories from Niagara baseball? You would all have memories, some good, some bad, but they'd be ingrained in your head. And how do we want to be remembered? How do, do we want to be, does each guy want to be remembered? Oh yeah, that guy was a, he was a goofball. He didn't, he didn't really live up to his potential and you know, uh, he could have been a lot better than he was. Or that was the, that was the hardest worker I played with. Or the, um, you know, the best, the, best, uh, you know, the, the, the smartest guy, the best baseball guy we had. So, to us, we, we want to write that chapter, and every day is a new page, and every day is a new story within the book, and we want, that, we want the, each chapter to be better. Every single year, we want to write a better chapter than the last. And what it boils down to is our culture of core values, of eagles, that's the roadmap, that's the, that's the way, that's the GPS, uh, the direction. But the chapter is what's written. At the end of the year, whatever chapter we wrote, we wrote, and it's gonna be in that book until the end of time. And the only thing we can do about it is learn from it, good or bad, and write a better chapter the next time. Um, so I was really proud of the seniors for coming up with that idea and, um, and giving that to our team and establishing that as our purpose. Um, because we want that chapter to represent our team. We want it to represent our school. We want it to represent our families. We want it to represent you guys in this room who support us. And so every, time, so every time we work and we get better and we do something, we go to class, we you know, open a door for a stranger, that's all writing that chapter and that's all uh, that we're focused on and that, we're, that we want to make sure that we leave uh, that indelible mark on this program uh, as long as it's around, okay? So that's where we're headed. Um, so uh, you guys know exactly up front what these guys are working on and what they're working towards because at the end of the day what I'm trying to do here as the coach of this program is to get these guys to establish what that purpose is and that the winning, uh, the making the playoffs or the winning the conference and all that stuff, that's, that's going to happen. That's an ancillary benefit of having the best program that we could ever have and the pride that we have in that program. Okay? Um, so having said that, uh, I appreciate you guys all coming out. I'm, I'm going to make one uh, presentation quick, and then we'll get to a video uh, that shows uh, it's 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 a it's a it's basically a recap of our year. It's got some highlights in the field and everything in it. That, so, um, Mr. Collins, I haven't had a chance to meet you yet, but thank you for coming. <laughs> uh, I can't wait to talk to you. Um, it's a pleasure, uh, and I'm going to uh, present you uh, from from my team to you. Uh, we've got a jersey here. <laughs> there. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, 
uh, we got this military digi camo hat. That sounds Netflix. great. All that right. sounds great. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Appreciate Thanks it. for we'll coming. Talk to you. Yeah. All right. And that's all I have to say, so enjoy the video. Thanks. It was a parent of a cancer survivor who was at a recent event that Friday night uh, called the Walk for Survivors. And it was a memorial mem remembrance ceremony uh, for those who passed away from cancer, but also those who are survivors of cancer. And she wrote to me about our baseball team. And she said, I just want to tell you that you have a group of remarkable young men on that team. Uh, they came to our event, they walked with us, they participated in the service, they spent time with the children and the adults who were there, and they are a great credit to your university. Having had interaction with Coach McCoy and with the team, and with our student athletes in general, um, I was really on reflection not surprised uh, by that email because it's been my experience as well. Father's story was absolutely perfect that he led off with today. I'm so proud of our baseball student athletes and the things that they accomplished not only on the field, in the classrooms, but in the community. So the renovations that will be done at this field honor them. It honors those who have played here before and it should be a recruiting advantage for those who will play and win championships here in the future. Truly a symbol for many years to come of the success of Niagara University and its athletics department. Ladies and gentlemen, to my left, Kyle Barker there in the pink tie, maybe, uh, is a senior in our sport management program, and he put together that video. How about a round of applause for Kyle? I 
I don't know about you, I, that's the seventh time I've seen that video. I still get goosebumps the size of baseballs as I'm watching that, and I'm sure those of you are all the same. The, the shots of, that were hovering above the field, you might think was a drone. That was actually Rob McCoy. He taught himself to fly. He was so happy out there, he was taking those videos. Well done, coach. Yeah. I mentioned earlier our Vincentian Fathers. Uh, those that live on campus are so helpful to us uh, in many ways on a day-to-day -day basis, but it gives me great pleasure to welcome Team Chaplain Father Joseph Hubbard, CM, who's gonna offer invocation this evening. Father? There's a good friend who always talked about the fact that the sacred space that's on a ball diamond when you cross the uh, foul lines. And seeing those pictures, I thought, oh my God, it's even more sacred than you might think. <laughs> so let us pray. In the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Loving God, be with us gather here this evening as we have come together in friendship and fellowship and with most grateful hearts. We thank you for the blessings of the individual and shared talents and gifts enjoyed by the staff and members of our Niagara University baseball team. We ask your blessings on the team at the start of a new season. Guide them to grow in learning in all they do. Filled with hope in their sport, which is all about going forth on a journey and working so hard to come home safe. We thank you for the interest and support provided by our and you baseball families, faithful friends, baseball alumni, for this team and all of its endeavors, certainly in the journey this season ahead, but most especially as their interest and generous support has provided the team with its beautiful new home here on Mount Eagle Ridge. Bless all that takes place on Niagara's new home diamond. May it always be a place of shining sportsmanship and achievement of welcome to one and all, with fond memories of those who have played baseball for Niagara over the many years. With our hearts filled with joy on such an evening, Lord, we do pray that you help all of us to grow in your love, so as to offer to others the care that you give to us. Guide us to work with you in making a difference in our world, so as to offer welcome to the many who face the fear of not knowing if they might ever be home again. And dear Lord, with grateful hearts for the meal we are about to share, we ask your blessing on this, the fruit of your bounty. We ask your blessing on those who are with us in spirit in this wonderful beginning, and on those who have made this occasion possible. Just one more gift from you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Father. It is now time for us to enjoy dinner. At the conclusion of dinner, we will have the keynote speaker, and uh, we hope you enjoy. Thank you very much. Bon appetit. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Your attention, please. <laughs> While you're finishing up your dessert and enjoying your coffee, we invite you to uh, watch our senior spotlight. A special thank you to all of the parents who contributed and to an assistant PR officer in our athletics department, Brianna Jacobs, for her hard work. So enjoy the senior spotlight. My experience at NU has been awesome. Baseball allowed me to meet a number of amazing people who I will continue to stay in touch with after college. I also really enjoyed being able to travel the country with these great people playing the sport that I love. For the younger guys, just have fun. Enjoy school and being with these awesome people every day. Keep the fun in baseball because times will get tough. Enjoy what you do and who you do it with because at the end of the day, these, these are the guys who will be there with you until the end. My time here at Niagara University has been amazing. I've made countless friends and even more memories that I'll never forget. The advice I want to give the underclassmen is to never stop working hard and to never stop having fun. The time flies by faster than you'll ever know. 
I played just yesterday. I was a freshman, but don't worry. I'll be back next year to bother you boys even more. Playing baseball for Niagara University is a privilege. The single thing I enjoyed the most about Niagara baseball is the never-ending competition. Whether it be workouts, team activities, social activities, or actually playing baseball, the guys on this team love to compete and challenge those around them to be better every day. Being in a competitive environment like this is exciting, and there's never a dull moment. It is also fun because you learn what your teammates are like in different situations. You learn who you can count on when it matters. To the underclassmen, four years goes by fast. Take advantage of the opportunity you have to play Division I baseball. Work hard now so you have no regrets in the future. Niagara allowed me to become best friends with 30-plus guys each year. <laughs> Playing against teams and players with a pedigree, such as Mariano Rivera Jr. and Jameis Winston, was something I'll never forget. Hitting the field day in and day out with guys who had a common goal was the best part of college baseball. My advice to the underclassmen would be to cherish the opportunity, cherish the morning practices, cherish team lifts, and most importantly, cherish your teammates. This will go down as the best chapter of your life. What I enjoyed most was being able to continue to play baseball with a great group of guys. The privilege of traveling the country and playing at beautiful ballparks are memories I will forever remember. My advice to the next wave of players here is to come in with an end in mind and use it to motivate you every day. Give more than what you take and leave the program better than what it was when you arrived to Niagara. Love your brothers and cherish their friendships on and off the field. There's so many things I love about playing Niagara baseball, but what I love most is the brotherhood. Over the past four years, I've been able to build friendships that will last much longer than just being here. One thing that makes us such an amazing team is the chemistry we have with each other. Every year we bring in new guys, but we welcome them with open arms and they just get added to the Pert family. Advice to the younger guys would to enjoy every moment you have here because it goes by too fast. Work hard and give everything you have to this program, but also take time to enjoy life as well. Lastly, to all the younger guys on the team, have passion for Niagara baseball. This is your family always and be the change now. I'll leave everyone with a question. As a team, how do you want to be remembered? Leave an impact that will have a lasting effect for years to come. The time is now. So much I got out of my experience here at Niagara. Uh, first of all, relationships. It was uh, a privilege to just play baseball at a Division I level. Uh, getting a good ed education. Uh, also, the mental game with Brian Kane. The core values we learned here at Niagara, that's going to stay with me uh, for the rest of my life in my uh, business professional life. So a big thank you to Coach McCoy and Coach Patty. And uh, advice for newcomers, I would say, uh, basically just don't take anything for granted. Uh, it's when you become a senior that you really realize that uh, the, clock, the clock runs out and uh, it's literally a privilege to uh, be part of the program and it goes by really fast. So just enjoy every part of it and uh, yeah, don't take anything for granted. I most enjoyed going to Virginia and meeting them on their field. It has been a great experience to be able to travel the country and play the best teams around. I also enjoyed creating everlasting friendships with the guys on the team. I had the best time hanging out with them in the hotels and on the bus rides with all the games we would play. It was a great time. I like to tell the underclassmen to play each day like it's their last because it goes quicker than you think and before you know it, you're already a senior. Also, I would like to thank you all for what you have done for the team. What I enjoyed most here, the friendships that I've made here has been incredible. And seeing and understanding the, the Purple Eagle culture and how everyone is committed to the team and the program. Some advice I'd give to underclassmen or incomers uh, is taking the experience as it only happens once and not everyone is able to get here like we are. Uh, learn something from every guy and trust the process. So as far as my experience here at Niagara over the past four years, playing here has been an honor and a privilege, definitely. Uh, not everybody's given this chance and opportunity, so I want to thank Coach, Coach McCoy and Coach Spatty for taking that chance on me and these guys that I came in with in my class. Uh, it's been a great four years traveling, being able to build these relationships with these guys and play baseball at the highest level. Uh, it's definitely been a privilege and it's really brought us all together. As far as advice goes, I would definitely say that baseball really takes a lot of devotion in our time uh, and because of that time we're allowed to develop great relationships with our friends and teammates uh, but younger guys don't forget to broaden your horizons and build friendships outside of the game because then it really can help enhance your college experience elsewhere and network throughout the school. In my four years here we've had a lot of ups and downs 
uh, the one thing that's uh, shone through through all that has been the brotherhood <laughs> that uh, we've shared and created with the guys here. It's pretty fun that we've made some lasting uh, friendships that'll be there forever, um, overcome some adversity, and uh, hopefully built this program up to a place where it can take off in the future. Advice for incoming freshmen and anybody is uh, don't take your health or your ability to play the great game for granted. I know I did for a while and I had some health scares there, but uh, it really helped reevaluate re and uh, focus my energy. And all I can say is don't take anything for granted. Live every day like you're, uh, maybe it would be, it's going to be your last day out there because it might be. Um, you never know what's going to happen. Don't wait for anything. Just uh, go get it. <laughs> Work hard, have fun, love hard. Enjoy the time with the guys, with the boys. <laughs>Clearly the best part was the pictures, right? The baby pictures and there. We've got some pretty photogenic guys on this team. But, uh, you know, what, what rang home to me as I was watching that video was the talk of the brotherhood and the love for Niagara baseball and not letting a moment slip away. How about a round of applause for our senior class? Again, a special thank you to Brianna Jacobs, Kyle, and our parents for helping us put together uh, that wonderful video. It's now time for our Legacy of Service Award presentation. Uh, I've, I'd like to ask uh, Father Marr, our president, our honoree, Mr. Terry Collins, president of Rich Baseball Operations, John Dandies, and Bison's GM, Mike Puchikowski, to join me up front. <coughs> <laughs> a native of Midland, Michigan, Terry Collins began to taste baseball success as a shortstop at Eastern Michigan University, coincidentally nicknamed the Eagles. He was a member of the 1971 team that won the NAIA National Championship and was named Outstanding Defensive Player of the Tournament. Later that same year, Terry began his long relationship with Western New York when he was drafted by the Pittsburgh Pirates and played for their New York Penn League affiliate in Niagara Falls. He hit 306 with the Niagara Falls Pirates who played their home games at what was Hyde Park Stadium and is now Sal Magley Stadium. He played 10 minor league seasons with the Pirates and the Los Angeles Dodgers before retiring and turning his attention to his managerial career. After managing for eight seasons in the Dodgers system, Terry returned to the Pirates and to Western New York to manage the AAA Buffalo Bisons. As the Bison skipper, he won 246 games in just three seasons, and following the 1991 season, he joined the Pirates as a coach at the major league level. Collins was named the manager of the Astros for the 1994 season, and his three years in Houston, he never had a losing year. In 1997, Collins made the leap to the American League and became the manager of the Anaheim Angels, where he guided the team to winning seasons in two of his three seasons in Southern California. In 2001, Terry returned to the managerial ranks when he took the helm of the New York Mets, where he managed for the past seven seasons. In 2015, Terry managed the Mets to the National League East Division Championship, and he guided the team to their first World Series appearance in the two, since the 2000 season. Following the 2015 season, the Sporting News named Terry Collins Manager of the Year. When Collins stepped down as the Mets manager at the end of the 2017 season, he did so with 551 wins, the second most in franchise history. In addition to his Manager of the Year award, Collins has been honored a number of times throughout his baseball career. He was inducted into the Buffalo Baseball Hall of Fame in 1992, the Eastern Michigan University Athletics Hall of Fame in 1994, and the Albuquerque Baseball Hall of Fame in 2014. Ladies and gentlemen, for a career of success as a collegiate and professional baseball player and manager, Niagara University is pleased to present Mr. Terry Collins with the Legacy of Service wow, Award. In addition to the award, we are pleased to present Mr. Collins with a citation of everything you already know about yourself. <laughs> Great, thank you so much. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome for tonight's keynote speaker, Mr. Terry Collins.
I'm too short to stand behind the podium for all night. <laughs> well, it is an honor to be here. As I, uh, as, as they said, I started my professional career here 47 years ago in Niagara Falls, and it's wonderful to be back. And 50 years ago, I was sitting at a table very similar to this as a freshman at Eastern Michigan University. So I know exactly how you guys are feeling, and it is certainly again an honor to be back. And anytime I speak at a banquet like this, it's always fun, except for tonight. After listening to Coach McCoy and watching that film, everything I was going to say, he said was in that film. So I've got to change my speech a little bit. And, but just reminds me, you know, I, had, I was with the Los Angeles Dodgers for 20 some years and got to have it was the greatest organization I've, I've been with. They, they just treat their people so good. And I got a great relationship with Tommy Lasorda. And I was telling the father tonight that there was a time when I was, used to run the minor leagues for the Dodgers. Tommy used to come to the minor leagues and help out with our, help our coaches and our players. So. One spring training, he came to me and he said, Hey, Terry, I'm going to be gone for a few days. i got to go to Washington, D.C. and give a talk. He said, I'll be back on Friday. So Friday, he comes back. and I said, Hey, how'd it go? And he said, You wouldn't believe it. And I said, What happened? He said, Well, I got up to Washington, D.C. And he said, I got picked up at the airport, and I'm going to the, to the, to the hotel. And I said to the driver, the kid who picked me up, I said, So what's this dinner about? And he said, Oh, this is the, one of the biggest dinners of the year in Washington. Tommy said, How many people are going to be there? And the guy said, Oh, about 2,000, maybe 2,500. And Tom said, you're kidding me. He said, well, who goes? He said, well, all the congressmen will be there, all the senators will be there, the Supreme Court will be there, uh, the president probably won't, but maybe the vice president will show up. Tommy said, man, he said, I didn't realize it was that big a thing. He said, I, I'm not sure I really what to say. He said, and he said, well, there's another speaker besides you. And, and Tom said, who is it? He said, it's Margaret Thatcher. He's going to talk tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and so, Tommy said, the dinner goes on, and after the dinner, they start to give the speeches, and Margaret Thatcher talks first, gives talks for 20 minutes, gets eight standing ovations. <laughs> Tommy said, I'm sitting at the table thinking, oh my God, what am I going to say? This woman just got eight standing ovations. So he said, I got up to the microphone, and I said, so 10 days ago, when I got this phone call to come to this illustrious dinner, I said to myself, Tommy, you've got to write the greatest speech you've ever given. And last night, at 3 o'clock in the morning, it came to me. And I wrote my speech, and I got on the plane today, and when I got to the airport, I lost it. And Margaret Thatcher found it. <laughs> That's exactly how I feel after following coach up here. That's the same situation. But let's talk some baseball. So in 47 years, I've had, I mean, I've done a lot of things and, and had a lot of fun, and I, and I experienced the same thing all you guys talked about, the seniors. It's, it's the competition side of the game that drives me. You know, I wasn't a very big guy. You know, I played, I was, you know, when I was in college, I was, I could run and I could catch the baseball, but I played hard. That's all I had. And my mother tell, used to tell a story that got in the New York papers one time when I was a little boy. My, we used, to, we used to play baseball a lot and my neighbor finally called, my neighbor's mother finally called her, my mom and said, uh, hey, my son can't play with Terry anymore. He plays too hard. <laughs> and that's the only thing, the way I knew about it. And that's the way I coached. And that's the way I played, and that's the way I tell my players today. You know, there's the, the fun part is the playing part. But you know what, guys? It's not about just winning. It's about what you have to do to win. And I tell my players every spring, in the big leagues, these guys making millions and millions of dollars. You prepare, you have some discipline, you execute, you'll win games. Because you're talented. And you know, tonight in how many other towns and how many in this country, there's baseball teams gathered who are saying the same thing you guys are saying. The issue is, are you willing to put in the time to do it? The time and the effort. Are you willing to block out the stuff on the outside that's going to take, distract you from making sure you can become the best players you can be, or the best people you can be? You know, when, when you take those jerseys off, guys, your experiences here will make you better. I give talks to a lot of businesses. I gave a talk a few years ago to Dow Chemical. I'm from Middle Michigan. And those of you who know anything about Middle Michigan, that's the home of Dow Chemical. And they had a leadership conference and they asked me to come and talk to it because I was a local guy. And one of the things I told them is that if, if I own a business, I'm going to hire a baseball player to work in my business. Because guys, we fail more than we succeed. And let me tell you something, life is about dealing with failures. It's about dealing with adversity. And us, you guys, and me, we're baseball players. We deal with it every day. You know, we strike out the bases loaded the first time up, we got three more times to come up there. And we got to be able to pick ourselves up and now to go out and do it again. Execute, prepare, have some fun, discipline. Those are all the things that we try to do in, 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 that are part of Major League Baseball. But, uh, you know, the, the best part about the game is 
going out at seven o'clock and playing. You know, in my seven years in New York City, I gotta tell you something, when 705 came, I finally put a smile on my face. Because now it's time to go out and play. That other stuff that goes along with, yeah, I, that's why I quit. That's why I had enough. I could, <laughs> can only take so much of that after a time. So uh, it is really, I, I just think that you're doing a, the, playing one of the greatest games in the world. You don't have to be big. You don't have to be ultimate. I mean, you take a look at Jose Altuve. You know, I, saw, I was watching the World Series, and I was saying, well, he's 5'6". He ain't 5'6", boys. If he's 5'6", I'm 6'2". <laughs> this tall. He, he plays like he's 6'2". So I thought I'd share just a couple stories with you. Last night, my father and I were talking, and, and, and Simon asked me, he said, hey, what, what was one of the worst arguments you ever had with an umpire? And I said, I'll tell you what. One day, when I was managing the Angels, there was an old umpire. His name was Derwin Merrill. He had been a major league umpire for about 26 years from Hooks, Texas, had a southern accent. So we're playing, in, we're, it's, it's, we're playing in September. We're tied for first with the Texas Rangers. He's, he's umpire first base, and my first base was Darren Erstad at the time. Ground ball to first, Darren dives, catches it. And why he just didn't get up and go over and tag the bag with his base or with his foot, I don't know. But he reached back with his glove and tried to tag the bag and throw it calls the guy safe. So I come storming out of the dugout, running out of the first baseline. He, as I get close, Derwin starts, gives me this. He said, now Terry, before you start, you got to understand, I'm on the downside of a very mediocre career. <laughs> <laughs> Just turn around and ran back to the dugout. I really couldn't say anything about that. <laughs> Just never, you, know, you just never know what you're going to run into in some of these situations. So. But I know that there's, you know, I know a lot of you guys may have some questions for me. Uh, I did a thing, it, I went back to my hometown. I had my 50th high school reunion this year, so I went back to it. First one I had been to. And, a guy from uh, my high school called me and said they have a new journalism class at, at the high school now and they would like you to come, if you could, to come and talk to the class. So I said, yeah, I'd be happy to. So I went to the high school and the teacher said, really it's nice to have you here. And he said, we, we've been preparing all week long to ask you some questions. And, and he said, do you mind if we ask a question? I said, of course not. That's why I'm here. So the teacher turned to the students. He said, uh, you guys have had all week. What's the first question? Some kid in the back. I was hand up and I said, yeah, what's your first name? She goes, how do you spell your name? What's the correct spelling of your name? I said, in seven years in New York, that's the one question I never had to face. So if you have some questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Um, again, it's an honor and pleasure to be here. I love baseball. I, I, you know, I, I have more fun being on the field with the guys, teaching, teaching the game and teaching the game right. So if there's anything I can answer, please don't hesitate. This is not the New York meeting. <laughs> Nothing. Yes? What's the biggest thing you learned from Tommy Lasorda that stuck with you through well, From Tommy Lasorda? Uh, his ability to get the players, to try to get the players to raise their game an extra level when he, when he needed to. Uh, you know, I, I learned, uh, Jim Leland was the guy. When I coached for Jim Leland in Pittsburgh, he was the guy who really taught me a lot about how to manage and how to manage people. Um, he was honest with his players. You know, they all talked about, they all, when I first got to New York, all the talk was how intense I was. Well, I'll tell you what, I've seen Jim Leland. I mean, I saw him climb Barry Bonds one day, about as bad as it can happen. But he also had the ability the next day to stop it, it was over, and make, make Barry a better person, which is difficult to do. So, I mean, those are the things, I, I think when you talk to those guys, you know, teaching the game was easy. It's, it's the inside that clubhouse where you gotta get them to go play, that's the hard part. I mean, I have had uh, so many personal one-on-one -on -one contacts with, you know, in the last years, you guys know Matt Harvey's really had a tough time, and when you play, when you were as good as he was, and now all of a sudden, he struggled because of his injuries to his arm, he's not the same guy. And, my, my job is not to try to get him to be, to be a better pitcher, but to have belief in himself again, that he can still get through even though he doesn't throw 98 miles an hour anymore. And those are the things that those older managers taught me. Anybody else? Who's a player that you really enjoyed coaching, or a couple players, and why did you enjoy coaching them specifically? Who were, who were guys that were easy to coach and why? Uh, David Wright, no brainer. Um, one of the finest people I've ever been around. Uh, I, I never had any children, but I, I told my wife one time, if 
If I would have had a daughter, I wanted to bring David right home. <laughs> Plus 140 million. <laughs> he just prepares so well. Uh, Jeff Bagwell. Jeff Bagwell, with my years in Houston, never said a word. But I used to take the rookies on the team, and I said, if you want to be good, just follow him around. Do what he does. His game preparation was second to none. Uh, those two were easy. Darren Erstad was easy. Tim Salmon was easy. Chuck Finley was the easiest pitcher I've ever had. He just he knew what he was going to do. He got himself prepared and never wanted to come out of a game. Today, they're all looking in the dugout, half of them. You know, they've got, I've got my 100 pitches in. I've got us in the sixth inning. Get me out. So, anybody else? Yes. How did you deal with guys who seem to be struggling mentally? Uh, you know, you, you pretty much you got to go back to the positives of what they do, you know, what, who they are, why they got to the big leagues. You know, this game is hard. You guys play. You know how hard it is. I tell my guys, if this game was easy, we'd be watching other people play it. And, and so it's a, it's a difficult game to play. And what you have to understand is when you get to the major league level, you know, you're the top 1% of the 1% who plays this game. So you just got to be able to understand you're good enough. Now it's about going out and believing what you, what you have to do on the field to be successful. And that is with Matt. Look, you can't throw the ball by anybody anymore. You know, now you got to use your curveball more. You got to use your changeup a little bit more. Stuff he never did before. So in, in, the, in, the, in a hitter, I tell you, one time in Anaheim, Darren Ursad came in, and this guy was a great hitter. He comes in my office, he's sitting across the desk from me, and I said, what's the matter? He said, you know, Terry, no matter where I've ever played, college, pro ball, I've always hit. I don't care who the hitting coach was, I always hit. I don't care what they, where they told me to put my hands or my feet, I always hit. I'm not hitting and I can't fix it. And that's a bad feeling. So now it's about going out and starting from, the scr starting from scratch. You don't think that's, if you, you know, I, for all these years that I've been in the major leagues, one of the things that never had to change was these guys have to start with the basics. Next week or two weeks when spring training starts, those first days of spring training, it's all basic stuff. It's a game of repetition. So when, when the guy like Darren was not struggling, we took him out the next day and we started right from basic. Got him in the batter's box, got him to spread his feet out, got him to hit the ball up the middle of the field just like you do when you were in the Louis. So you got to go start from scratch and well, eventually the fact that he's talented, it takes over. Anybody else? Who was the hardest worker that you coached? The hardest worker I coached? The guy that put in the most time. Wow. <coughs> the game changed a little bit due to the weight room. So that's years ago, those guys, that extra work guys, you know, they used to come out and hit and hit and hit. Now it's, they got to go to the weight room first. And, um, I'll tell you, one thing about big league players, they work harder than you think they do. You know, I used to watch, I, I locked, when I was in Pittsburgh, I locked next to Barry Bonds for three years. And I tell you what, he worked harder than people think he did. He didn't miss a day. He didn't miss, he, he, every single day he had a plan and he stuck by it. He had a routine. He hit, took an X amount of swings. He was in the weight room. He took fly balls in the outfield. He got himself ready to play. Um, but, I mean, no, they all work hard. I don't think there's anybody who really stands out work. There's some guys who don't work hard. But, um, the guys, there's a lot of them who do. Yes? You talked about Matt Harvey and the challenges that he's facing currently. Um, there's been several pitchers in the last few years, Justin Verlander being a great example of the World Series, who reinvented themselves. Uh, how as a manager did you work with them to try to pitcher, pitchers who were these guys who could just throw and throw, who now had to change? How did you work with them and Harvey being a great example? You find a good pitching coach. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know one thing about pitchers. Uh, I didn't pitch. So I, one of my best friends is Sandy Koufax. Uh, you guys may not know who Sandy Koufax is, but <laughs> believe me, a lot of people in this room do. So I'm the only guy who's ever had Sandy Koufax as a pitching coach. When I was managing in AAA for the Dodgers, Sandy was a rover. He used to rover around the minor leagues. So he came into Albuquerque, and my pitching coach had to go home, so Sandy was my pitching coach for two days. So we're sitting on the bench in Albuquerque, and I brought this reliever in the game in the ninth inning and walks the first guy. God. Walks the second guy, and now I'm stinking pacing. Sandy calls me over and he said, Did you ever pitch? I said, No. He goes, It ain't that easy. Sit down. <laughs> <laughs> so I let the pitching coaches deal with those guys. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> baseball is all you've known. What will you miss the most being away from the game the day to day or the week to week grind of the, of the game? Just exactly what those guys talked about. I'm going to miss the guys. The relationships I had with all the players. You know, it's so fun. That's why I stayed young. I stayed young because I hung around with these guys. You know, in the, in the game itself, when, you, when the game starts, it's so fun to watch your players play. I mean, I had, you know, I'm sitting in the, game, the first game of the World Series. I sat there and said, you know, of all the things I did, all the bus rides I took, seven winter, I went to winter ball, I managed the winter ball seven years. I went to Japan for two years. I coached Team China. All the things I've done, this is the culmination of it all. To stand in that, that, that third baseline and knowing that my team is one of the best teams, maybe the best, had a chance to be the best team in the world that year. So that that's that's the stuff I'm going to miss more. Yes. How did we ever let Murphy get over to the Nationals? <laughs> <laughs> Turned down 17 million. So <laughs> free agency. Did you get with the Nationals. <laughs> I didn't pick it, you know. I didn't, I didn't buy him a ticket down there. I I, I'll tell you one thing, I'd like to get a buy him a ticket to get back. I know that. Anybody else? Yes? Every player obviously has a ceiling. Some are a little higher than others, like yours was. Some will end after this four year college experience. What do you think were the biggest characteristics when you left the playing? lifestyle and moved into a management professional lifestyle that you think are characteristics these guys have. The hardest thing I think that every player has to face is knowing himself. You've got to know who you are and what kind of a player you are. You know, we all try to be better, but there is a ceiling. We all try to be better. And I think the time came when I said, look, I can't do anymore. I can't, you know, this is as good as I'm going to be. Now I want to go try something else. And I think as long as, as long as you can look yourself in the mirror and say, look, I gave it the best shot I gave it. I did what I had to do. I worked as hard as I could possibly work. This is where it's at. Then you've got to be satisfied by being able to walk away or getting up or doing something else in life. Um, you know, I had, had that same challenge two months ago, three months ago, when I morning to get up to go to, uh, to spring training. Uh, you know, getting into towns at 5 a.m. to have a 1 o'clock game. Couldn't do it anymore. So the time had come, but yet it, 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 to realize, you know, that hey, look, I, I did the best I could. It's time to turn it over to somebody else. I think you can leave it with peace of mind. Anybody else? All right, I'll tell you one last joke. I got one. So I had one year. I went to a, a banquet in Texas, and the governor was there. Uh, Ann Richards. I don't know if anybody remembers Ann Richards, but she was one of the great politicians of all time. She told a story about. Uh, the United Nations, and when I lived in New York, I overlooked the United Nations from my apartment in Long Island City. So there's a great story. So she said the the United Nations were looking for someone to, to come in and talk on peace, and they finally decided the one guy who should do it is the Pope. So they called the Vatican and they got the Pope on the phone and they said, "We'd like to come over and address the General Assembly. Uh, would you be happy to do?" He said, "I'll be happy to. I'll be right as soon as I can. I'll be there." So he gets in. He's jet and he's flying across the Atlantic and when he, on his way across he runs into a big storm and he has to divert around the storm. So by the time he gets to LaGuardia, he's late, he gets off the plane, he gets in the limousine, tells the driver, he said, look, you got to get me to the United Nations as fast as you can. I'm late, I'm supposed to give a speech today and I need to get there as quickly as possible. Driver nods his head, he pulls out of LaGuardia, he's driving down the Grand Central. Cars are zipping by him, he's going about 45, cars are flying by him. Pope reaches up and taps him on the shoulder, he said, excuse me, you didn't hear me, I need to get there as fast as I can. I, I'm, I got a big speech, and the guy said, well, you don't understand. He said, this is the only job I got, I've got three speeding tickets. If I get a fourth, I lose my job, my family will be go stuck, you know, starve, this is as fast as I'm driving. Pope said, I'll drive, pull over. So the guy pulls over, Pope gets behind the wheel, chauffeur gets in the back, off they go. He's flying down the Grand Central. Well, sure enough, the lights are flashing. They pull him over. The policeman walks up to him and he says, uh, can I see your driver's license? Well, he said, I don't have a driver's license. But he had a Vatican ID, so he took his ID off and gave it to the policeman. The policeman goes back in his car and he calls headquarters and said, Sergeant, I got a little bit of a diplomatic problem here. And the sergeant said, oh, don't tell me it's the councilman again. He said, no, this guy's bigger than the councilman. He said, is it the mayor? Is the mayor got problems? He goes, no, this guy's bigger than the mayor. 
He said, well, who is he? He said, I don't know, but he's got the Pope for a chauffeur. <laughs> I just want to wish you guys the best season, have a great time, play hard, enjoy each other, uh, you're playing the greatest game in the world, uh, good luck to you all, coach, good luck, thanks for having me here tonight, and, and all the best, and happy new year to everybody, thank you. Excuse me, I just want to have a, um, a Kanye West, uh, Taylor, uh, Swift moment here for a second. <laughs> I'm glad you guys understood that. I want to say just uh, three things. Uh, the first is what a pleasure it is for Mike Pachkowski and I to be here and for us uh, in Rich Baseball to be associated with Niagara University, uh, with the baseball team. Coach, you've done a spectacular job. Um, Mike Gentile, who runs the sports management program, is spectacular. Dean, thank you. And of course, Simon is a great athletic director. So it really is a great pleasure to be here and coach I will tell you unequivocally and please quote me the baseball players are the smartest guys that I have in my class uh, yeah. number two, number two and, and you should also be aware of this uh, Rich Baseball in addition to our association with the Toronto Blue Jays at the AAA level uh, operate two other teams uh, one in Morgantown West Virginia associated with the uh, Pittsburgh Pirates and the other in Springdale, Arkansas, associated with the Kansas City Royals. And as a result, we have a strong relationship with both in the SEC and the Big 12 uh, and a number of other collegiate conferences across the country. And I will tell you once again, and you need to please hear it from me, that the differentiation for Niagara University right across the board is that, in my view, You've got one of the finest college, university college presidents in the country, in Father Jim Marr. Uh -huh. uh, and the fact that you stood there and listened to that Pope joke, I, uh, <laughs> I, would, not, I would not dare tread on that. Good joke, John. That. I would not dare tread on that. Last, the, uh, the last point. Um, Mike Buczkowski and I, over the past 30 years, have been associated with, I don't know, 12 or more uh, professional baseball organizations across the United States. Everybody from the, from the New York Mets, to the Pittsburgh Pirates, to the Cleveland Indians, to the Toronto Blue Jays, to the Royals, uh, to the Detroit Tigers. Uh, and at the end of the day, we have met all of the all-stars and all of the general managers and all of the players and all of the front offices uh, for an office members uh, that you could possibly imagine. But at the end of the day, I would say this to, to the players, it's certainly how you play the game, but what ha it's what happens after you play the game and how you live your life. And that is without, without equivocation, I will tell you that we are tremendously honored. Uh, Mike and I have known Terry for 30 years. We believe that Terry Collins is the finest human being in baseball, period. So a big hand for Terry Collins. And, and just to show you that we all have a sense of humor and a sense of humility, as he was bracing back and forth, which if any of you watch SNY, you know he would do every night with the New York media. I saw some of you saw that glint off his right hand, okay? Most of you, if not all of you, will never have the opportunity to see that, what's on that right hand, and that is the championship ring. So before you leave tonight, ask him to, he really won't take it off, but I assure you that. Take a look at that, because that is a symbol of a true champion. And having said that, Mike and I, over the years, uh, I've been very fortunate because we have a number of rings, not quite like that one, but for championships that are very the one. And tonight, as I was leaving my house, uh, I have a little case in which all of my rings are in. And I looked at one and I said, I'm not going to wear it because it just might not be the right thing to do because I'm a humble guy and don't want to upstage my friend of 30 years. 
<laughs> and I looked at that ring, and it said Kansas City Royals. Oh, you rat. <laughs> John, thank you. Appreciate that. Terry, you're the genuine article. There's a lot of things you could be doing this weekend. We can't thank you enough for joining us here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Terry Cox. A few other thank yous I'd like to send out. Mike Jeswald from our university and his students, thank you so much. Uh, this night wouldn't be half as successful without the hard work that you put in. Haley Besaw from our athletics department uh, has worked round the clock on putting this together. Haley, thank you so much. Of course, Brianna and Kyle, who we mentioned earlier. Our baseball coaching staff, Rob Spatty, uh, they work very, very hard. Thank you for everything that you're doing to put this together. Uh, Matt Spatafore, excuse me, slipped, <laughs> slipped into lingo there. I heard it just chatter over here. <laughs> uh, no one calls him anything else. I didn't even know. Yeah. Uh, I'd also like to thank uh, Frank Fianac, who we mentioned earlier. He sponsored our players and our coaches. Meals, round of applause for our sponsor, Frank. Our reception sponsors, Mike and Nicole Tevlin, round of applause, please, for them. All of our table sponsors, and there are several of them, thank you so much for investing in tonight. They're listed on the program on your table. And a special thank you to Michelle Gabriel. Where are you, Michelle? Could you stand up just for one second? She has worked so hard on the basket raffle and the silent auction. Thank you very much. All the parents who have contributed or worked to contribute to those items, that is a big part of this dinner uh, and what makes it so successful, so thank you. The folks from Four Points by Sheridan, thank you for all that you've done. It's a wonderful venue. How about a round of applause for them? As we move to close tonight's program, it is my pleasure to introduce Father James J. Marr, CM, the 26th president of Niagara University. A Vincentian priest, Father Marr had enjoyed a 23-year career at St. John's University, who beat Duke today in the garden, <laughs> before being named Niagara's president in March 2013. Father Marr has had an immense impact at Niagara during his four years on Mont Eagle Ridge. Under his leadership, Niagara continues to position itself as the premier institution for higher education in the region, while advancing a strategy to establish a worldwide presence. Knowing that universities are social and economic drivers for their communities, Father Marr has aligned NU's objectives to complement the goals of our region. He remains steadfastly committed to the economic and social development of the communities within Niagara Falls, Niagara County, and all of Western New York. Niagara's annual economic impact now exceeds $227 million. That's annual economic impact, $227 million. And Father Marr has risen on Business First's list of Western New York's most influential leaders each of the last four years. True to his Vincentian background, Father Marr has made access and affordability to excellent education hallmarks of his presidency at Niagara University. He has also become a fixture in the local community through his support of a lengthy list of nonprofit organizations. Father's committed to a university model of education that positively impacts the members of our community, especially those most neglected. He's also an avid runner, a sports enthusiast. Father Marr is an ardent supporter of Niagara University Athletics ever since the first day he came to our campus and currently serves on the NCAA Division I Board of Directors. So John, we agree with you, he's the best. Ladies and gentlemen, it's with great pleasure that I welcome the 26th President of Niagara University, Father James J. Marr. Thank you, Simon. Just a few brief remarks. Uh, I thank Mike Buchowski for being here tonight. John Dandy is a wonderful friend. Uh, two wonderful, influential, great people in the region. So we thank you. Terry, we can't thank you enough for being here. Uh, pay attention, guys, uh, to the life of Terry Collins. It's the living example of not using the game of baseball 
uh, for his own, but allowing the game of baseball to shape him. And what a wonderful baseball, a wonderful life that Terry Collins has lived uh, because he's respected the game and allowed the game to, to develop him and to develop his life. So thank you for that wonderful life lesson, your example for our student athletes and everyone here. Uh, I, I thank in a special way uh, Rob McCoy and the coaching staff um, for all that you've done uh, for our university and for our program. Uh, that was very clear tonight uh, when we looked at the video and we just knew, uh, seen the great things that Rob has done and toiled uh, like a lot of our coaches do uh, each and every day uh, for their love of the profession, uh, for their love of student athletes, for following their passion. So Rob, thank you. Um, I thank our student athletes who are wonderful examples uh, of what I like to refer to as uh, the three C's. Uh, competition, classwork, and civic engagement. Uh, and uh, they're wonderful, wonderful examples of people uh, who will learn the life lessons that athletics will teach them, but they'll integrate that. And the greatest lesson of it all is that it's all connected. What you do on the field, what you do in the classroom, what you do in your relationships, what you do in the community, all matters, and it all goes together. Uh, I thank the parents and the families who are here. Um, it is really heartening for us in the administration and the faculty to see the great, great support and the support that you provide to our student athletes. Uh, you hand us wonderful young men and we are humbled uh, that you chose Niagara University as the place where you sent your son to attend university and to play baseball. So we thank you. We don't take any of what you do and have done for granted. Uh, and we look forward to those who will graduate this year, but those who will be with us and the wonderful program that's been built. There's a famous movie that we all can think of, Field of Dreams. And the credo in that field is, if you build it, they will come. It was a baseball field but it was much more than a baseball field. Uh, when I first came to Niagara University, uh, one of the striking things about the campus that when I came on the campus that bothered me every time I looked at it was our baseball field. <laughs> now I was a former baseball player, not a very good one, but it really was the first thing that you saw when you came on the campus. A sloping right field, a crooked fence, and I said to myself, these guys who come to the university to play here, and this coach <coughs> must really love this game. And I said, we, Niagara University, has to do better. We have an idle asset that's sitting out there that needs to be fixed. And so we are incredibly proud of the work that all of us have done together to prepare this baseball field for the opening on April 7th. And as Simon said, we have some more work to do. But let's recognize that the greatest asset we have is not a field or land, as important as that is, but a committed coaching staff, an athletic department, a university community, and incredibly talented young men who commit themselves to a professional life and professionalism at Niagara University to build their lives and their careers and make our community better. So let's rededicate ourselves tonight to not only pushing through the finish line on this field, but allowing and enabling this baseball program to be what it can be and this university to be what it can be. And truly, if we build it, they will come to us. Thank you for your support. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for attending tonight's dinner. We look forward to seeing everyone for opening day 2018, April 7th at the brand new Bobo Field. Thank you and good night. <laughs>